Well, hello folks, uh, welcome to Tinsley Park Shooting Club. Uh, <clears throat> subject of the video today is about the hats and gladius, which I've got in front of me. Uh, and if you want to self tune your rifle, which I have, have done uh, to put a regulator in it, you need to get around the anti tamper. Uh, so after this little introduction you'll probably see about half an hour uh, where I'm taking the rifle apart, removing the anti-tamper and then fitting an Alteros regulator. Uh, the actual removal of the anti-tamper is quite easy. Uh, it's quite soft metal. Uh, the hardest part I found was after removing the anti-tamper is that you've got <coughs> two screws just there, and they screw. They go through and screw into the uh, inside of the uh, ammo cylinder, and they've been locked tighted and all glued in. Uh, now I didn't have my blade gun at hand, which you really you need to apply it to uh, melt the actual glue. So the way around it, I, I, what I had to do is once you've, you'll see, once you've got through the anti-tamper. You need to remove the, the top scope rail and then you need to loosen off the two screws at the end of the rail there and once that's off you've got to loosen off the screw that's holding on the, uh, the safety catch. If you can loosen those off you will then be able to get the back end of it, lift it slightly and pull it back out through the barrel bands and that's how you get to it uh, <clears throat> but basically that is it uh, that's all I need to tell you really on that the rest will be self-explanatory in the video uh, what I've done today uh, I've topped it all up I've come down here I've come down to uh, test the, uh, the power and adjust it accordingly now it's your responsibility when you take your rifle to bits to do a self tune to make sure that it falls within the legal limits when you do start shooting it. So you must have a chronograph and you must always check the rifle over a chronograph if ever you're taking it apart. Uh, so that's all I can say really. Uh, the anti tamper was something that the uh, manufacturers decided to do. It's not a legal requirement. So if somebody tells you it's illegal to take the anti tamper off, it's not. You can take the anti-tamper off, you can tune your rifle yourself and save yourself a fortune. But you must be aware that you're responsible for the power. Even if they've put the anti-tamper on, you're still responsible for the power of your rifle. Uh, so there we go. So uh, I'll see you in about half an hour. And then the next thing you'll see after that will be the, uh, the field testing. So I'll see you soon. I've got the uh, hats and gladius. Uh, I'm going to uh, fit a regulator to it, but it needs the anti tamper removing. Now they've got a break off screw down that hole there. Uh, <clears throat> so I need to draw that out. So that'll be the first job. Now it's quite deep until we get to it. I think it's about an inch down. 
Now what I've got here, I've got an old biro pen. Uh, and I've been talking to Rob Taylor, and he says he's a good idea to help uh, guide in the drill bit. So it's a snap-off cap on the uh, anti-tamper, and it's like a nipple sticking up, so I've got to drill through that first, so this helps guide it into the centre. And if you look at this pen, it's a little hole at that end, which is big enough for this metal drill bit, which I believe is a 2mm, 2 or 3mm anyway. Uh, <coughs> and then the other end, I think that's a, just over 4mm and that's the drill bit I'll be using to drill it out. So I'll start it off with a small drill bit and drill it out with that. So uh, I'll give you some dimensions now. So the first one will be the diameter of the hole. And that is... around 8mm wide. So whatever you use as a guide needs to be that size. A pen I've been using is one called a banner. Uh, so any buyer will do it, or any metal tube. That's that sort of size, but that fits easily not. The size of that is just move this fan. Pen is uh, what's that? Seven o two on the outer, but it fits easily, so I'll be using that. Use a small one to start off with. See if that's doing anything. That's doing its job. Seems to be down the middle, so just make sure it's a bit more lined up. It seems to be a bit off centre somewhere.
it? I think I've got right through it already. So I just need a bigger drill head now. Just drill the cap off. Right, I've drilled through it. I've uh, drilled the cap bits off, so I just need a bigger drill button now to get through the rest of it. But it seems quite soft metal. So as soon as you got past the uh, the anti break off nipple at the top, it should be pretty easy going. So I need a bigger drill bit now, and uh, I think that's an M4. So I'll get one of them and we'll carry on. It. Okay, the next thing now would be to uh, undo the nut, which is in the uh, breech area. And that's a two and a half millimetre. So that's being undone. That, uh. Right, I could have done this before, but I'm doing it now anyway. I'm going to take the air cylinder off. It basically, unscrews. Right, next I'll undo the stock. Uh, there's two screws under the stock to undo it. It's one of the four grit in front of the trigger housing. And then this one at the back. Got a different screwdriver for that, I think. Well, oh, can't find a long enough screwdriver, so I'm going to buy and a screwdriver with it. Easy. Okay, rear stock screw is a short one, four stock screw is a long one, and the uh, breech screw is an Allen screw. So, uh, front, rear, and the breech. Okay, what we've got down here now. Right, this will lift off. I've got to get, I can feel it there if you look. It wants to come out. So, what I've got to do now is get this off. I imagine that'll be from the two top ones there. Uh, I'll maybe get these out, those two and those two. I'll do that. So, we'll come back to that. on that. Oh, you know that is tight. 
natural meat on it. It's probably Okay, so there's the uh, under tamper pen. If you can see that, that's the hole it came out of. So you just left with the top. That just needs unscrewing there. Get a pair of plies on it. So that's the anti tamper pen. Uh, <clears throat> that's what's screwed into the breech system here. Uh, and then that bit is not threaded, and that goes through the anti tamper pin at the back, which is through there. So I'll take this uh, Allen nut off now, and we'll be able to get into the back of that. Took a lot of fiddling around because I had to uh, loosen the screws off there, loosen the screws off the top of that with the. Uh, so I'll pan out a bit. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, what they've done, they've uh, basically locked these two screws and these two screws in with either glue or Loctite. So you need a heat to get to them. If you can get those four off, you could get into it just by taking. And probably just get into it by taking these two out, but because they're a lot tighter, in I had to unscrew the, uh, the actual rail off the top of there where the scope fits, uh, unscrew it from the top of the breech, uh, loosen some of these screws off just so I could slide it down the barrel and get it off. If you look on there, there's the transfer port. Uh, there's the armour, and there's a spring at the back. But what I'll do now, I'll get that get that nut off, and we'll take the rod out. And that nut there is a four millimetre. So that's not that's not in tight. So I'll just loosen. Loosen that off. And I've got a feeling now this is held in by the uh, two trigger pins when that comes out the block will come out that just needs a punch on it and that should come out actually I don't need to take the uh, trigger out if I actually push back on the hammer I hope it don't come out I'm sure it started coming out before There we go, and that's the pin. So that's the anti tamper out now. So I didn't need to get that off. So that is it. That is the pin. And basically, you can see the workings of it now. If you look at the breech you've got the screw going down there 
goes through that and that then will come down and lock into that and that's the anti tamper okay so there's a transfer port we've got an o-ring just in there and the top Take a transfer port out, and there should be another O ring in there. So there's a, only a little hole in that, and um, what you can do, you can open that up. I would say it's about a millimetre at the moment, but you can open that up, and it makes it more efficient. Obviously, any work you do on these, when you take them apart, when you put them back together, you've got to check them with a the craniograph to make sure you're in the, within the legal limit. And the only reason I've done this is because I'm fitting a, a regulator and um, when I fit the Altaros before it would only go well it was two foot pounds under than what it was firing before I put it in so what I needed to do was uh, increase the power on that to make up the difference when the regulator's in and I can't do that while it's on so I had to take it out so what I need to do now is put it all back together. Uh, like I say, the anti tamper is not, not hard to drill at. Uh, the oddest things are getting by these two here. If you use your heat gun on it, it will probably melt the, uh, the glue or whatever. But as it stands, I don't need to take them out now anyway. So I'll try and get it all back together. A few things did drop out. Uh, so I've got a uh, schematic for it. So I'll put it back together and hopefully uh, it'll be okay. Okay, <clears throat> well I've got to replace the, uh, the anti-tamper screw. It was a M4 12mm Allen uh, bolt. And that's a 2.5mm head on that, you could get whatever you like. but So it's an M4 uh, and it's 12 millimeter long and that's a replacement okay time to put it back together not a lot of bloody light in here at the moment sorry about that That goes there. I must remember
Okay folks, I'm back with the Axe and uh, Gladius, it's all back together now. Uh, so what I'm about to do now is take the air uh, cylinder off, bleed it and then put in the uh, Ultos regulator. Now the regulator I've got, originally I've got it for the Hatson Galatian. Uh, but because I couldn't get the anti-tamper off of that one, uh, I couldn't really use it because it was uh, it was uh, reading two foot pounds under what it was before fitting the regulator. Uh, so you do need to uh, be able to adjust the power when fitting these. Now I've got the uh, anti tamper taken off the Gladius. I can actually fit the same regulator to this air tube because I'll be able to make the adjustments that I need to do to get it to the correct power and as always make sure when you've finished putting your rifles back together to check it over the chronograph to make sure you're within the legal limits because it's your responsibility to make sure your rifle is shooting within the limit and I suggest when you do your testing you test the heaviest pellet you can find to put in it because they're more likely to uh, take you near the limit so uh, when I do the test with this I'll be using Bisley Magnums at 21 just over 21 grains uh, and if I set it to say 11.6 of those I know that any other pellet should be within that legal limit so uh, that's a point to think about so what I'll do now I'll take the air cylinder off the rifle uh, de-gas it and put the uh, regulator in So, there we go. So, you just unscrew these. You can unscrew these uh, whether they've got air in or not. They don't come out until the hammer hits it. Quite a long thread on these. It's nearly there, I think. So that's the air cylinder out and uh, had some supply the rifles with a uh, degassing valve. It's got a Allen nut on the end. So you screw it on. Actually this one. That'll be for the Galatian. Just get me other uh, degasser. You believe there's so many different ones. That's the one. Okay. So you get the Allen key. Then you screw it in. There's a hole in that, that's where the air comes out of. What's coming out now? So that's degassed it. I 
So I'm doing that lot. You can use that to help undo the uh, inlet valve. So that's that off. Put this silicon spray for the inside. Like I say this one was for the Hudson uh, Galatian. When I got it, it was too tight to actually fit in the tube for some reason uh, so they're not all standard size so uh, Cliff Kirkman one of our members put it on his lathe and uh, ground a bit off it to make it fit but like I say once it did fit the power weren't high enough because it needed adjustment so I'm using uh, some uh, silicon gum grease on the O-rings. That'll also help it go in. And you put it in that way round. See a rather tight fit. There you go. Just gone through. Shove it in so far. Now what you need to remember when putting the uh, that little inlet valve back in is that the when you've got the uh, regulator in, you've got to take this A-ring off because uh, the actual uh, regulator, if it needs to vent itself, it will do it through this part. So just take this off. And you leave a slight gap. Just clean that up a bit with the spray. So basically screw it back in small allen key there that is uh, really small <laughs> yeah so just leave that much gap in it I say that's to let the regulator breathe if it needs to uh, I'll put it on I'll put the air in if it does start to leak and I put the air in. Uh, I'll just pack out the O-ring that's on the actual regulator itself.
Okay. Next job is to fill it back up. Thank you.